You know, I'm not hearing anything so far today. Uh, I don't know what that means. That could mean they're working on a deal, and they don't want to put out anything prematurely, either side. Or it could just mean nothing's going on. Uh, I, you know, it, nothing has happened. Uh, there's no indication uh, in the Eagles' offices when I called over there that anything was close to happening. Um, so I'm going to say 4 o'clock's going to pass without this getting done, which doesn't mean that they won't re-sign Sam Bradford at some point, but it kind of deflates the balloon a little bit if that's the way it goes, I think. Yeah, now the deadline's at 4. Uh, if they don't get to that time, is there some thought that Tom Condon, his agent, will – kind of wait to that legal tampering area just to see uh, if there's any other suitors out there if they can't figure out something by the end of today? Yeah, they're not close. If they don't have, you know, something that that they can at least go forward with, I think March 7th is when you can start talking legally to teams. Everybody knows they're they're talking now. That's silly, but nonetheless, that's the rule. Um, yeah, I think I think he probably gets to free agency if they don't uh, if they don't have something going today. I, I don't say they necessarily have to sign it by four o'clock, but if they're not in a productive dialogue today, I think it goes to next week. I think that he just takes some time off and come back to the table, you know. But I really don't think, guys, unless I've really gauged this the wrong way, I don't see great options for either side other than each other. You know, I really don't. Yeah. So I kind of think this gets done sooner or later. I'd really rather it be sooner because it's a pain in my neck. Well, do you do you real good chance it gets done? Do you see like last year? It just seemed like a foregone conclusion that they were going to get a deal done with Macklin, and then it just kind of drifted right. off. And the next yeah, thing you know, right. he was gone. I mean, you're is right. this similar? You know, I was taking my cues last year from Macklin himself. I remember I went out to a thing at King of Prussia Mall uh, like a week before free agency at a print appearance that he made on behalf of the Eagles. And he was absolutely certain at that point that he was – I kept asking him about Kansas City, and he was like, I don't you know. I've lived here a long time now, you know. He, was, he thought he was going to get something done with the Eagles, and Kansas City really stepped up. But I think Macklin – I mean, everybody knew Macklin was an attractive free agent. The issue was, you know, would the Eagles outbid somebody for him? What, how attractive was he? With Bradford, you know, you're talking about, is there somebody that wants to give him like $15 million, $16 million, $18 million a year, you know, off of what he did in Philadelphia last season? And while I think he improved greatly down the stretch, and I think he's the Eagles' best option going forward. I just don't see that team. I'm sure it's not going to be Houston, which is the team everybody a month ago mm-hmm. was thinking would be the the real fly in the ointment. I mean, Houston's a playoff team. They've got J.J. Watt. They've got DeAndre Hopkins. They've got, you know, they can really, just, I think they can plug in Sam Bradford and be a Super Bowl contender. But they don't see it that way. I'm convinced of that. After being at the Combine, I talked to the Texans people. They're looking to draft and develop a quarterback at this point. Uh, Les and Bowen. They're really not. They're not in the Sam Bradford hunt. Hmm. Uh, Les Bowen from the Philadelphia Daily News is uh, with us here. They have till four o'clock if they want to give them the franchise tag. Now there were some reports the other day. I don't know if you can confirm them or not, Les, that the Eagles increased their offer to keep Bradford. You know, here. I mean, do, 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 there was a, a ridiculous number that was reported twenty five million a while back. You know, increasing yeah, that number, uh, right? Yeah. So when they say increasing that number, yeah, the what's the area? What the twenty-five million was what he wanted. It wasn't what they were offering. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, I think they're probably trying to get him for like twelve, fourteen, somewhere in that area. But but the issue is the guarantee. I mean, it can be twenty or twenty-five, but what's the? How much of it is he really going to see? You know. If, you would set it up so that you had to be healthy. You had to make at least 14 or 15 starts. You could set it up, you know, money if he makes the Pro Bowl, money if the Eagles make the playoff. You know, there are a lot of incentives that you can throw into this. I, I don't know what the base will be. I mean, he really, 
He did get through last season. He only had that collarbone issue. He missed two games. It probably would have been one game had the games not been four days apart at the time that he got hurt. Uh, he missed a Thanksgiving Day game. It's the second game. But uh, I think, you know, he didn't, his knees didn't get hurt. Uh, but it's still just one year. It's not like he played five years after having the two ACL surgeries. You know, I think you have to protect yourself, and I don't think the upfront money, the absolute guaranteed money, is, is as big as it would be for a quarterback who's been healthy, you know, pretty much his whole career. Les, it's Pete Thompson. I'm curious to find out your thoughts. It's been a while now since he's been hired. What 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 are your impressions of Doug Peterson? What's he been like in one on ones? Uh, just what your thoughts are on the Eagles' new coach? Oh, he's been very forthcoming, Pete. He's been very uh, uh, accessible, very, uh, I think, honest, almost to a fault. Uh, he really, I, I can't say anything bad about him. I, I still think he has a pretty skinny resume for an NFL head coach. But I can't complain about the way he's been with us so far. And I think the Jim Schwartz hiring, as a lot of people have said, is a really, really big deal. I mean, I, this guy is going to build a good defense. This is a huge step up for the Eagles, I think. And then going back to the 4-3 is a real good thing for the Eagles. So, you know, I don't have anything bad to say about Doug Peterson so far. If we Now, if we end up with Chase Daniel playing quarterback this year uh, because he played for Doug in Kansas City, I might change my mind. But right now, I'm, I'm pretty positive about him. Hey, Les, you know, this is a team that's 7-9, and nine, didn't make the playoff two years in a row. Would you define them as a team that is rebuilding? You know, in the NFL, that's a tricky, tricky term. It doesn't really – it's not like the NBA where you, you know, spend years trying to get a high pick or something like that. Um, rebuilding to an extent, but – with an offensive, with a couple tweaks to the offensive line, with Bradford re-signed, with a healthy Jordan Hicks, they can compete in the NFC East next year. I, I don't see them being a terrible team or anything like that. And, I, and there's no real need to be a terrible team in the NFL. You know, it's the draft is pretty democratic, and you've seen teams that do a good job in the draft stay near the top of the league year after year. It's not like you you have to be. Uh, you know, you have to be really bad for three or four years to, to then have a good team. All you need to do is draft well on a consistent basis and re-sign your good players when they when they get to free agency at, at prices that allow you to to breathe. And, uh, you know, you can win that way. So I, I don't see, like, I don't think we're five years away from anything, but but I do see, uh, you know, will they win the Super Bowl? I would doubt it, you know, but I didn't think they were going to win the Super Bowl last year either. But, uh, you know, I, I think that the middle of the pack type team. Yeah, I guess the you asked that question because does that really, if you don't think you're rebuilding, you know, does then Sam Bradford coming back, then does that make that uh, basically your your plan A? I mean, if you feel like you're in the mix, like you said, I agree with you. In the NFL, I think everybody's kind of in the mix except for maybe four lousy teams at the bottom and there's probably four right. teams that are better than everybody at the top and then everybody else seems like they're in this, you know, mix mosh in the middle, so... Right. Why would you sell yourself short if you feel Bradford's the best option? Oh, absolutely. And I wanted to address one other thing while I'm on here. I read yet another piece today on the website that seemed to assume that if the Eagles signed Sam Bradford, they wouldn't be drafting and developing a quarterback. I, I don't understand that thinking. And nobody has said that. In fact, it's just the opposite. They've made it pretty clear they're going to draft a quarterback either in the first round or in the first several rounds. And there are some quarterbacks in this class who, you know, could be like Kirk Cousins, Russell Wilson type guys, second, third round guys who, who might develop. Uh, whatever happens with Sam Bradford, the Eagles are going to draft a quarterback. It's not a choice between one or the other. <laughs> you know, it might if they don't sign Bradford, there might be more pressure on them to take one at 13, which I'm not sure is a good you know, if, if the first two or three guys are gone by the time you get to 13, you're taking a guy at 13 that might not be any better than a guy you get in the second or third round. That's not a good thing. That doesn't put you any closer 
to be a, a, a contender. I, I really don't think, you know, I, I, I'm a little puzzled sometimes by the takes people have on the bad situation. <laughs> uh, at least they get to read your words. They listen to mine and think they hear something different. You know how that works out? <laughs> ah, okay. Well, it happens to all of us then, yeah. <laughs> uh, Les Bowen, Philly.com, Philadelphia Daily News, covering the Eagles, Sam Bradford. Uh, it, it would At this point, Sam, would you be shocked – if in the next uh, 45 minutes they franchised him? Franchise, yes. Uh, transition tag, maybe not so much. That'd be a little less money. Uh, the, the transition tag, uh, you uh, you put together the, the top 10 uh, salaries at the position last season, so that's around 17 point something million for a year. I wouldn't be shocked if they did that. I'd be surprised. I don't think that I don't think they think they have the cap room, either transition or franchise, and, and gamble it, that he's going to play under that tag, and it and the whole all the money is going to come right off the cap. If they do a longer term deal, you know the cap charge might be like ten million this year or something like that instead of seventeen. So you know I, I think they're looking to do a deal. I don't think they're going to going to tag, but if they don't tag, you know it's. Uh, they're willing to gamble that he's not going to be the quarterback. And, boy, that's going to get real interesting once they start that. Hey, Les, what about Jason Peters? Is that a guy that you think might end up uh, capped casually? Yeah, we all thought that at the end of the season. And it seemed to make a lot of sense. Uh, $10 million cap number this year. Uh, Yeah, we all knew, we all saw him, you know, really hobbled last season, didn't play as well. But uh, all the signs have been that they are very much uh, believing they can get a healthy year out of Jason Peters, and they talked about that again at the Combine. I think Doug Peterson might think that he's going to run practice differently than Chip Kelly did, and he's going to be more like an Andy Reid type of guy who gave the older players days off and you know didn't really require them to, to do much but show up and play. <laughs> You know, uh, and that you know they they can keep Jason healthier that way. Uh, I think it's a gamble, and certainly a big cap number. But uh, on the other hand, they have a lot to do on that offensive line, and if you add in left tackle to what they already have to do, then you then you really uh, <laughs> you, you really got a tall order there. So uh, I know they're kind of crossing their fingers, but I do think they're going to keep Jason Peters around. So maybe no smoothie shakes and practice is different, but of course, as media, we just want you know get back in that auditorium, you know, stop doing this stuff outside with snow falling right. and bl- blistering winds, and you know we're all huddled around trying to hear nuggets of wisdom, right? Yeah, yeah. As some of the fans might know, we we during the chip era, we did press conferences in a tent on the practice field so that he could step right out of the tent to practice rather than have to walk out of the auditorium 50 or 100 feet to get to practice. <laughs> the main, main problem for me wasn't the wind or the snow. It was there's an incredible noise level there. You're right off of Broad Street and Patterson Avenue, so there's trucks and there's the airport, there's planes coming in. You can't hear the questions or the answers that way. But and that's what they wanted. <laughs> I do think we'll, yeah, that was kind of the tip. Tip didn't mind that a bit, but I do think things will be more normal in this administration. Uh, Les Bowen, at Les Bowen on Twitter, over at philly.com. Check out his uh, stuff at uh, the Philadelphia Daily News, of course, uh, checking on the Eagles, and uh, we'll keep our eye on the clock. As I agree with Les, I don't believe there will be a franchise tag for Bradford, but will they get a longer-term deal done? Uh, That remains to be seen. Thank you, Les. Thank you, guys. Good to talk to you.